Mm. That's a really difficult one. But um, <laughs> I think I'll go with my old Instagram bio. Yeah. Uh, it says architect, son, brother, and friend. Yeah. What did you change it to? Because that's the one I remember. <laughs> uh, I changed it to something along the lines of uh, lead designer. Ah, okay. From Zimbabwe's okay. first um, EV facility. Ah, yeah, we'll talk about that, uh, that EV facility and your role there. What's 94 plus 4? 98. That's crazy. I know, I 98. Sure. Yeah. So my father is a, <laughs> is a civil engineer. Yeah. So about those big drafting, drafting boards. Uh, growing up, so you do some residential plans once in a while. Yeah. And when I got the gist of what he was doing, I, I remember saying to him, you know what? I don't want to be calculating stuff like you do with your public and stuff. I just want to draw houses. Yeah. When I grow up, I, want to, I just want to make houses. And that's, it was born. So my entire life in primary school, secondary school, I was aiming at becoming an architect. An architect. I remember quitting accounts yeah. at all level, just so I could just, <laughs> you know, focus on becoming an architect. Something I agree, by the way, if there's anyone who's trying to <laughs> do business or anything, yeah. I recommend you do accounting, because that stuff comes back to bite you in the future. <laughs> but um, yeah. <laughs> For as long as I remember, ever since I was a kid, I was wanting to be an architect. So I worked towards that my entire life. And I, I've been blessed to have um, a brother who, who chose the same path I had with me. So I had, an, I had a very clear idea. And my father being involved in construction in his capacities as an engineer as well, yeah. definitely did help, you know, inheriting all those drafting tools, knowing what's what, you know. Uh, so even when I meet friends from primary school and they ask me, so what are you doing now? I tell them I'm an architect. They're like, yeah, what else could you have done? What else could you have done? <laughs> that was your thing, so. So in primary school, I just was into art. Yeah. I drew everything. I drew cars I saw on the street. I didn't remember yeah. what they looked like. Try to draw the side profile. I draw still things, I do keys. There was this show on, on, on Star Kids. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you remember. <laughs> no, that. I do, I do. <laughs> there was these guys who were doing art uh, lessons so you could follow yeah. how exactly they were doing this. So, yeah, it was mostly art in, um, in, 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 in primary school. Yeah. And as you get to secondary school, it's becoming more specific. So I took up technical graphics from Form 1 to Form 4. I tried to fight my admin to let them uh, allow me to, you know, get an A-level, they wouldn't have any of that. So I ended up doing matches in camp, to which I knew I was wasting my time doing camp because I knew I was never going to use all the things anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I think the basic, uh, the technical graphics, the maths, the physics, and the appreciation with the arts, eh? Yeah. So when, 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 you, when you actually get into this stuff, uh, architecture is, is a scientific art. There's the science of it, there's the art of it, and that comes together. Yeah. To call yeah. it an art uh, takes away the rational side of things. But at the same time, if you use just rational, it just yeah. becomes more like <laughs> engineering. So when you combine the science and the art together, you, you, you start to have a sense of what architecture is. So I was also very strong in my arts. I love my history, I love my literature. Yeah. Um, <laughs> In my free time, I actually do like poems. Oh. I do like pieces, you know, for the muse. What happens to be architecture? I get to, to A level, I've done my almost proper. Yeah. It's time to do maths, physics, and TG, as I would have loved it. Yeah. The administration insists you need to do MPC. Because, well, that's what these uh, schools do. Yeah. So I do <laughs> MPC. And I score a modest 11 points, yeah. which is just about enough to get me into architecture school. But here's a fun fact I actually didn't get into architecture school on day one, <laughs> like via an application. I had to persist. I had so, to... what was happening there? So, yeah, cut off points things, they aren't going 14 points, 15 points, yeah. you know. And I have 11 points <laughs> plus the passion, you know, yeah. and the drive. 
So it took a lot of, you know, back and forth and uh, consulting until I met this guy called Professor Joe Knight. Yeah. Uh, when it was time for orientation to for because you have like three problems in the, in the faculty of the built environment. Yeah, and which uni is this by the way? That's NAS. Okay. So there's quantity surveying, there's real estate, there's architecture. Yeah. So you do your orientation as a faculty, then there's a time when you split into your different into classes. Yeah. So I was in quantity surveying because I managed to sneak in through quantity <laughs> surveying. When it was time for the architect guys to go, I just sneaked in with them. You know? For real? Yeah, I just went with the group and Yo, we like had a office movie. lecture. I know. <laughs> so we go there, I'm all fired up because this is my stuff, right? I know this stuff from my brother, from my dad, you yeah. know, growing up, it's my passion, it's my thing. And I'm really grateful Professor Knight picked up that. It's like, so I woke up to him after the lecture and I say to him, uh, look, I've been putting quite a way, but this is my stuff. This is what I want. So, to do. It. <laughs> so John is like, cool, write your name down. So I write my name down, I get it and stuff. Monday comes, the chairman finally shows up. He knows me, by the way, because. Because I, you've I, been trying. Yeah, I've been <laughs> seeing him like seven times already. Queru, <laughs> blah, you know? And he's like, Naka, uh, you can join the, 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 the class. If you join the class, just make sure you finish doing the paperwork with the switch before the end of the week. That's how I go into architecture school. So you're, you're you're going to school with your with your buddies who are doing commercials, right? Yeah. They are in accounting. Uh, those guys they work on A4. This is like A4, yeah. right? That's that's a basic sheet for them. Yeah. Then for an architecture student, um, the basic sheet is eight times the size. So you have one, two, three, four times two. That's oh, one sheet. Okay. All right. So you have to fill up at least 12 of those manually. So imagine doing work, drawing, to fill up something that much on one project, of which you do like maybe three presentations per project. So that's 36 sheets. Yeah, so, so when you say you're doing work, what kind of work is it? Like, so you are, you are drawing and then coming back to the sheet and filling in line by line. So it's, it's, the design process is a very interesting thing. Yeah. And it's what they're trying to, to teach you. Yeah. So it's the first assignment in architecture school. You're asked to make uh, 25 sketches of uh, buildings around the campus. So while everyone is having a go exploring the first days of being a freshman, <laughs> you're you are already working. <laughs> busy doing 25 sketches that are during a week. Yeah. That's a lot of work, right? And remember, the sketching for most people is not that good because they've never done technical graphics or art. Um, yeah, yeah. So you can imagine how bad it is. <laughs> and that's just the first assignment. Then the other part of it, uh, it required you to do um, uh, an ideal place. You're supposed to depict your ideal place. Not oh. something you've seen. But something in your mind. Something in your head, something that's never been seen. So in all of this, they're trying to awaken the creativity in you because when you design buildings, yes, you can find inspiration, but essentially you're coming up with something from nothing in a way. Yeah. So that's what they were getting at. That's just the face of it. But as you grow, um, you know, along the way, you get a project. So we're designing a clinic. So you have to research how do you design a clinic? What are the standards? Um, what, uh, what is the other work, you know, that's been done? <laughs> yeah. So now the part of documenting this process, what you've seen, what's required, the inputs, yeah. then you're actually proposing something. You have to come up with the model, you have to come up with these presentation sheets, you know, and you have to present to people. You know, in high school, I got into trouble with, um, with, my, with most of my teachers. I was an avid debater. Yeah. And I knew <laughs> if I'm gonna be an architect, I'm gonna be convincing people, essentially arguing. Yeah. with people with money you know it's their money on the line and i'm supposed to convince supposed them that to. <laughs> that's the right thing to do yeah <laughs> oh sometimes you have to argue out your ideas as well and in general you just need to be eloquent when you speak to people so yeah. i i really took a serious devotion to to debate uh, and those skills paid off yeah I because hear yeah presentations are everything you know, you could have a good design, but if you don't know how you to, can't to communicate sell it, that. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 it's, it's, it's 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 a waste of time. 
So there's that part where you actually get to present the stuff um, and uh, you know convince the jury, convince your colleagues that yeah you're doing a good job. And most of the times you rarely ever get it right, you know, because there's no right or wrong answer. It's always subjective. It's it's up to the person. That's yeah. that's the thing about design. <laughs> I mean, you've seen the new BMW grills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the uh, I don't like phone. those. I love those. <laughs> Wait, you know what? I'm gonna give you a few more months. You're gonna you can love those. Well, the problem with me is, is I generally like Merc a lot. Ah, do you so I, yeah, so I generally don't like BMW to begin with. So it takes a lot for me to like fall so in love with anything BMW. But I, but I do hear what you're saying so about you, see, you know stuff being very subjective. <laughs> is 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 what's at play, and you're trying to convince people that yes, fine, this is how you prefer things. This yeah. is what you would have done because at the end of the day, we see things as we are. Yeah. But you're convincing people that well, look, this is probably not what you'd have done, but still good enough. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So <laughs> you can see how in terms of. Uh, just the persona you are challenged to to portray ideas in a certain light yeah. different from what you typically do if you are doing some uh, other program yeah. you know yeah. where there's a research and there's facts and you present them and no one can argue with you yeah you know but you could argue your head was not the best color to put in that uid building you know that's true so that's very true So in school you get like a micro model of what's it like to design something. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, when you finish studying architecture, you don't just have to be an architect. You can be a furniture designer. You can be an interior designer. You can be a graphic designer. You can be a contractor if you want. Yeah. Right. You can be anything. So the idea is to give you a framework of how things work, um, how to create. So there are some things that are very very relatable. But I'll tell you this. Yeah. Despite the, 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 the tight deadlines and everything we're doing in architecture school, it's nothing like in the real world. In the real world, there's real stakes, right? Yeah. There's money involved, there's deadlines, <laughs> there's, there's real things. Like you could mess up uh, pipes and whatnot and, and stuff like that, I guess. Um, then in the, in, in, at school, it's just Max, dude. <laughs> like, you can give me a B, it's fine, I won't die, you know, I'll yeah. leave it there. Yeah. And uh, so. <laughs> But in a way, the amount of work scales up, because this is not a drill. Yeah. This is real. This is going to be built, so it has to work. It has to be functional. You can't put out drains of something that doesn't work. You can't yeah. put out a roof that leaks. The stakes you know? are higher now. The stakes are real and they are higher. But in a way, the training is so rigorous. It, it teaches you to work fast, think fast, yeah. and be innovative in a way to be able to deal with challenges. Because you will meet uh, people who have no appreciation for the amount of work it entails to <laughs> design a building. Yeah. Which is a ton of work, believe me. It will take you months to design a house. Yeah. But people believe somehow you can just make a sit over for an afternoon and come up with a funny floor plan and you throw it out with them and you're charging the walls for it. Yeah. But there's a lot, lot more. And I think what's grueling about architecture is not even the things I've described. Yeah. The actual work, it's the thought process. Because okay, so, so describe that a bit more. Here's the thing: if 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 you wanted to to build a house, for example, yeah, before you start thinking of how to draw a perfect sh shape, you need to think about the geography, the climate, way what's the orientation of the building, you know, what are the soils like, you know. I can't actually write that on the. On, on the on the, on the final drain that I've considered that there's clay soils here, so we're going to do special foundation, something like that. <coughs> but yeah. it's stuff you need to 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 think about. So there's so much thought process. You, you haven't even gotten to the place where you're thinking of how the space works, what's going to be the user experience, what are the possible different scenarios. You know. Yeah. Um, think of this apartment way right now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. when when whenever it was designed, uh, half a a century ago, or whenever it was designed, there was a certain line of thought that came with it. Yeah. For example, the elevator is dead. But trouble getting all this finish up here. Yeah? But in the back in the day it was an issue because the elevator was working. No one actually ever thought uh, in Zim there'll come a time when power is a problem or these things would be generally generally yeah. So there's just there's so much to think about, you know? And then try to capture that and reconcile it 
with an actual <laughs> design, yeah, yeah, you know, and theme that allows for this thing. So it's just a lot of work to encapsulate in 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 in, in a single statement or in a small document. It yeah. is a lot of work. And here's the thing about buildings: buildings evolve, you know. So when you design, you know, you know. Uh, <laughs> Things are gonna change. Supposed something. to think of, uh, the test of think time. of Barbers, now Galaxy Mall. Yeah. Right where it was designed, it was uh, it was a uh, it was a uh, retail, you know, big uh, retail store, and you know, it was state of the art. Yeah. Now it's said to something else totally. Yeah. But I'm I'm <laughs> not sure the guy who designed it actually ever saw SMEs coming into the place. Too, yeah. I don't even know if the word SMEs existed at the time. At the time. So. You see the amount of responsibility that comes with it. It's just a lot of work. Yeah. So that's the thing. School is a drill, really. It teaches you the basics, but most of the stuff you learn and figure out as you go. Yeah. So just now, I, I, I think I mentioned uh, uh, this idea of putting out sheets, like having your work on a big uh, A1 sheet. Yeah. So as you go ahead of, as you go ahead of your studies, you move from manually doing stuff to digital. Yeah. So you're doing stuff on your computer. And to actually think you can simulate on compute a building, that's a lot of processing power. Yeah. Right? So you need a really powerful uh, device. Now, <laughs> how much does a good gaming laptop cost? Starting yeah. upwards of a thousand, yeah. right? Yeah. And software has come every year. There's a new release, and you, you need to stay up to date. You know, I can't <laughs> even start talking about licenses. You know? I, can't, I can't talk about paying four thousand a year yeah. for a software license. <laughs> but um, you need to stay up to date because you're in school. You're learning. When you get out of the industry, you need to be relevant. You need to be, yeah. So you're trying to stay up to date with this stuff, which is hard to access, by the way. So. Just for starters, you see the amount of money it costs you. Think of those sheets I was talking about. When you plot, when you print on those A1s, yeah. I think printing one was back in the day was like five bucks. And you have 12 of these, mm. so that's 60 yeah, bucks. And there's something you presentation, constantly. a project. So you're spending at least somewhere in the range of 150 USD per project. There's never a time on campus that you print. <laughs> without a project. And this so is in addition one. to the to the tuition, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> this is a this are costs you're fit, fitting on your own. You've got really expensive visiting lecturers and all these things. Yeah. So it's 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 definitely a very, very expensive thing to do. So getting the the, 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 the right uh, amount of uh, resources required, you know, uh, to actually get you to, to properly do your work. Yeah. It's, it's kind of hard. I think we started off architecture school 27. Oh, 27, 27 20. people in the class. Yeah. And when it was all said and done, there was just 15 of us. And I guess that's testament to what you said. It's, yeah. It's really it's never, one of the hardest. Never, yeah. It's never also about the numbers. <laughs> There's definitely, you never have that much architects graduating because this stuff is growing. Yeah. I literally mean it, it gets personal and physical. I've seen people cry, I've seen people break down, I've seen people change programs after two years. Yeah. I've seen people fail in repeat. How, how long was the program? It's five years. Okay. Five years for uh, for your bachelor's, then you can do another two years for your master's. You're trying to you're trying to learn uh, you're trying to translate the, the knowledge you got from school yeah. into the real world and seeing how things actually work, you know. Uh, when you say we're going to do some working drawings for a toilet, you know, what does it look <laughs> like? Yeah. What does it mean to meet a client and present to them? Because remember, you're presenting to your lecturers. Yeah. Now you're presenting to some investor from Korea. Who's and there's money on, on the stage, on like you bucks, <laughs> You know, so you're basically learning the realities you know, of the an actual life of an architect. Yeah. And slowly before you know it, you, you are in it. You're designing yeah. as well. And so so during that attachment are you the one presenting, are you the one designing or it's a bit of both? You're also watching and learning and then 
gradually it's, it's taking everything, over. Really, it's everything. I, I had the privilege of working at a firm where I, I, I was given the liberty to design. In some firms, juniors are not given that liberty. Ah. Your stuff is just to document what's been designed by someone else senior. Okay. okay. While in that okay. firm, I managed to, 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 to be able to design some things all the way from the ground up, you know, to your drawings, presentations, everything. Yeah. So it was quite. Um, it was quite an experience, and also Namibia is a fairly stable economy, better than our own. Yeah. So things they function in a way that's closer to the reality of what things should. Be. <laughs> yeah, so <I> that <laughs> was that, that was a beautiful thing about being in Namibia. You know, just seeing how a normal economy works, um, how standard processes work in the field. You know, yeah. so yeah, that was attachment. I think the main reason why I went to Namibia is I wanted to see, you know, um, what these other emerging uh, economies or markets are doing yeah. and see if there's a way that we can do that, you know, just try to bring that experience back home because at the end of the day, home is home, you yeah. know, yeah. and yeah. Is you actually learn and realize there's nothing too fancy sometimes about the things we see going on in SA Very true. in Namibia. <laughs> we can equally do the same thing here. You that's know? true. So that's 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 always that was always my my end game to always come back home and implement some of the things I saw that side on this side of the world. So that's and I think you've done that to a degree. I think I, th I think we'll get into some of the buildings you designed soon. Yeah. <laughs> but but I do think you've done that too. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I finish uh, my final year in Arari. Yeah. Then I'm asking myself, should I go back to Namibia and work for this guy or I should, uh, you know, just jump stay into here? The, into the sea. <laughs> just jump into the sea, you know, be the master of my. <laughs> of my soul, the captain of my soul, you know, yeah. then I realized, well, you know what, I could really go back to Namibia. A job is literally waiting for me then, anytime. Yeah. But uh, is that what I really wanted to, you know? Is that what I believe in? Because at the end of the day, it's, it's no point doing something you don't believe in. Yeah. You know, we only get one shot in this life. You gotta get it right. There, there ain't no time for you to be doing stuff you don't believe yeah, in or like. Necessarily like, yeah. So, I just took the hard road. I said, I'm going solo. I'm going solo and we'll see where we get to, you know? Yeah. And um, <laughs> here we are. So in the context of an architect, what what does that mean when you go solo? What, what were the implications so, when you started that? Ideally, I am not an architect in the sense of uh, a registered architect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in the sense of what I do, I am an architect in the general sense of the word. So if I were to to follow the path, uh, I would have to go to school for for masters again. Then I need to work for another registered architect in Zim for at least two years. Then, oh, okay. uh, so that's essentially yeah. another four years, essentially. Yeah. So it will take you about <laughs> ten years to become an architect. <laughs> And, and is it is it that you didn't have the patience for that or look why didn't you pursue I, that i won't go into detail so much about uh my issues with the system yeah with, uh, <laughs> with the establishment um but all i i could I, all i could argue is i have the capability yeah. to design these things so why not yeah you know why not you know because even if I went and worked in a registered uh, architect's office, if that same project they were able to show up, I'd still be the one designing it, and I wouldn't get credit for it. You yeah, know? I hear that. So at the end of the day, for me, that's not a true reflection. I remember uh, in Namibia, we once designed these uh, very nice skyscrapers that were shown to some investors in Korea. Yeah, these guys were super impressed by the work they put out, and whose name was it? Was on the work <laughs> was my bosses, and I, and I bet I don't think uh, yeah, respectfully, the guy has the know-how of making the things we did. Yeah, 
like the actual skill of making something like that. Yeah. So then you ask yourself, do you want to be true? You know, do you want to be true to your story? Do you want to be true to yourself? So I just decided to, you know, start doing my own thing. Yeah. You know? And that comes with its own kind of backlash. <laughs> so that's exactly what I was going to say. You know, like, what are the implications? Do you miss out on certain kinds of work? Uh, what does the community Certainly. say? Like, you know, like just you, you, you miss out a lot of things. So, for example, um, there's, 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 there's kind of projects you know you'll never see me pitching up for. For example, someone wants to design a new airport. Right now, at this <laughs> stage in my career, you can't see me there. Yeah. You know? I, I, I don't have the guns for that. <laughs> is, is it because they'll ask you, you, are you, you're not even a registered architect, so you can't even get that contract? Exactly. So, yeah, we are, we are definitely working progress towards doing that, but yeah. at the same time, yeah. It just it is it's 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 a question of you defy the system. There's, there's, <laughs> there's, there's consequences. There's always a consequence. That's true. You know, it's it's like a prison. You know, uh, prison is punishment for defying certain rules and regulations. Yeah. And when you yeah. get to prison, you're getting punished for it basically. <laughs> so there's alienation that comes with it. Uh, sometimes you do get some people who reach out to you. You know, and they give encouragement. They're really happy with the work you're doing. Then there's people who, who genuinely don't want to see you doing that yeah. because they feel entitled. It's not your place to do that. I think that's the thing people need to, you know, wake up and realize. We're living in a world where no one really cares about what's on your papers. People care so much about what you can do. Yeah, you know, and one of the days, I mean, just recently there was there was a graduation ceremony. I think like four thousand people graduated something, <laughs> yeah. and I'm just thinking this guy is, uh, you know, hooting in town and celebrating. I'm like, okay, cool, <laughs> you're gonna come through and see the reality, you know. <laughs> so it's a different ball game altogether, you know. So you could you could argue and say this guy took a shortcut. Yeah, but I don't think it's about shortcuts. Yeah. Uh, as humble as I can say this, if 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 I wasn't good at what I do, I don't think I'd have designed something like that. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's, it's about merit, right? Yeah. You could be entitled in a sense because you have the qualifications, but but yeah, being good at <laughs> being, being being good at it is is a different thing altogether. So at the end of the day, yeah, there were people who say I took the shortcut. But then again, do I need to take the long road? Is it really necessary? Yeah. Because maybe the long road was created for serious risks. That was the big break. That was the big break. I think that's that's the one project I had always, every architect always uh, is looking for this one project, you know, yeah. that really shows the full extent of their capabilities. A defining yeah. project that puts them on the map. On the map. So I finished school on a Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> on a Saturday, a real cool friend of mine asks me if I can design this building for these guys. And yeah, I say, yeah, uh, I can do it. So, <laughs> yeah. Did you know the scope of the project at the time, or...? Yeah, I got a brief. I knew only what had to be done, and there was a whole bunch of other people done a lot of proposals. Yeah. But anyway, I won't get into the details of what actually happened. Yeah. All I know is the following week, I got the permission to design this building. And... I just came at it with everything I had at the time, you know? Yeah. I just came and up when with was this. 2019, May? 2019. Yeah? Yeah. So... That's the thing about architecture. We design so many things, man. So many buildings, and some of them never see the light of day. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I've designed even way better things than the EV center, but they were never right, built. Actualizing them. <laughs> so, just having this building in that location, you know, being actually built. Yeah. That was a big thing. That that was definitely <laughs> a big thing. So. In a way, I, I feel that was a big break, you know. It, it really got the attention of many people. 
you know, for the right and the wrong reasons. Yeah. But anyway, all publicity is good publicity, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. when you say the right reasons, let's talk about that. What does that mean? Like, is is that more opportunity or just yeah, there's, let's there's talk about that? There's people that have come to me because they've seen the work, right? So there is no need for me to try and justify to someone why they should <laughs> give me their project because they know I have the capability to trust. Do it. They, yeah. the, the trust is already established, you know. There's people you know that you are legit good at what you do because they've seen your work and they like what you've done. Yeah. So many opportunities come and you prove yourself really that well. I say where my money is, you know. Yeah. I put my my way where my money is. At. So. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. And then some of the wrong reasons. The wrong reasons. That? Um, again, you 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 attract scrutiny from from all kinds of people, you know. Um, there was a time, I think, there was a conversation on Twitter, you know, about the opening of this thing. And with all things, it becomes political, you know. Ah. Someone is already talking about how these cars are so expensive, so the old man probably doesn't afford them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's... That's yeah, not that's the point. It is exactly. I just really designed a building. That's missing the point, man. So... Yeah. Yo, yeah, that's crazy. Then I <laughs> then then like I mentioned before, yeah, there's some people who feel entitled that uh young, you know, architect like we shouldn't be doing work like that, you know? Yeah. And then it also kind of exposes the thinking we have as a people. I've had so many people uh comment blindly. They well, they wouldn't know I was the one designing it. Yeah. People say things like ah this building must have been done by people from 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 South Africa, you know, because yeah, man, in Zim we don't have people who make this this kind of stuff. And that's and that's a really sad thing, man. It is because when you think about it, it was that entire project was done for was done by hundred percent local uh, consultants. You know, the client is also Zimbabwe, black yeah. as we are, you know, <laughs> yeah. young as we are. Yeah. It was just a project that a lot of young black people collaborated on, you know, and um, something beautiful like that came out. So, yeah. I think it's a it's a beacon in a way of what we can be, what we can, exactly. what we can do. Exactly. exactly. And it's a pity to to, to to realize some people don't see things that way. The lighting, the signage, had to be done in a certain way. The the, the 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 tones of the lighting as well. I think there's there's two options. There's the cool ones. There's the warm tones. You know, there's the different colors. So all of those things work together to just produce a simple building. You yeah. know, it's simplistic. It's minimalistic in a way. Yeah. Not entirely simple, but very minimalistic, straightforward, but also high tech and modern looking. Yeah. You know, it's. I, I don't know how it's going to age, you know, that's the other thing about architecture. You don't know how it's going to pan out, so I just want to see how how it, how, how it ages, you know. Look at it in 10 years yeah. and see <laughs> how it would have aged. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's, that, that was basically the building. And also what made it special was this idea that we're doing this for electric vehicles. You know, it's the first of its kind uh, in Zim. Yeah. You're selling electric cars off the line from BYD in Zim. These are 2021 models, you yeah. know? No, some funny 2009 model here. Yeah. yeah. Straight off the line. So it, it it makes certain things different. There's no need to worry about exhaust fumes, you know, in that space because it's all electric. <laughs> yeah. <I> so <laughs> it, it was really, really an interesting. Um, and a really interesting project. So many things changing along the way, you know, some compromises, you know, we had certain things, but I'm, I'm definitely happy with, with how it came out. Yeah. And uh, if you ask me if I'd do it again, absolutely. That's great to hear. I'll do it over and over again. <laughs> That's great to hear. Yeah. Uh, I think the interior of the building communicates that better. Yeah. Because, well, there's not much you can do um, on the exterior of the glass to your showroom, except to command the attention. 
of course you can do much more like evoke feelings i i don't know there, there are all kinds of feelings one yeah will get if they see that building yeah maybe it's celebratory maybe it's our you know you're an our like oh maybe it's the thing you said where someone immediately feels it was done by someone else from outside the same all know. those sort of things i guess so <laughs> at the end of the day what matters is it's a reaction it's 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 powerful enough to be moving someone to you know yeah. uh, think of something or say something or suggest something whether positive or negative, I guess. It's, yeah, that's true. It's the provocation to actually that invitation to to say something. But the interior does a better job at evoking moods and feelings with the lighting and the palettes we used. You know. Yeah. In the various spaces, the offices, the transition spaces, the displays, the showrooms. You know. Uh, I I think that's where the the evocative feelings you know uh or the evocative design is it way yeah that's where you get to experience it so this is a simple uh uh 4000 square meter piece of land yeah. and it's facing airport road and it's meant to be a showroom and offices and and then a workshop so naturally you want to keep it simple clean and simple you only keep it functional so because you're facing airport road you want the display to be very visible from airport road yeah. so so how do you do this you know it explains the large sections of glazing but at the same time you want to give it a light touch and the feel of you know high modernism so you you work with a certain palette of materials yeah. like the aluminium the glass the steel you know yeah. and you want to keep things simple you know i could go on and on and on about you know the different intricacies you know? <laughs> for example how you have those uh vertical struts by the entrance on the other wall yeah would somewhat create balance to the facade because it's a very long facade so you introduce those horizontal elements to you know break down the wall. vertical rather to break down the horizontality because that's a very long elevation yeah. <coughs> excuse me so you need to articulate it in a way that it speaks of the different functions of spaces so you have the large sections on the on the showroom you have the entrance with the canopy that's somewhat understated which in a way is in anticipation of the double volume space you enter into when you get on the inside yeah you know i'm not sure if you've been there but I've passed a, by, but I've never actually been, been in you should, the building. You should just go by, pretend to buy a car, yeah. and look around <laughs> and you know, just experience the space. <laughs> so yeah, this idea that you start off, you know, with a very low ceiling height. As soon as you get inside, boom, this double volume space. Yeah. And um, you see the the, the, the the language of the, the upper showroom. That was the one cool thing about airport road, you know. I think it's the first display in Zim, a car showroom that has cars on an elevated level. Mostly our showrooms are just on the ground, just on the ground. Yeah. Where do you find cars propped up up there? So that's the other cool thing about airport road. And then it's also an office space. And then here's the thing about a showroom. It's always got to say showroom, no matter what time of the day it is. Yeah. So yeah. there's a character during the day and a very different one at night. So the oh, lighting yeah, design, the lighting. <laughs> yeah, the lighting design was very, very uh, uh, intentional. You know, the lights had to look a certain way. Um, I feel uh, that's the one of the objectives of my career. Look, I yeah. know I'm living on borrowed time. Yeah, <laughs> we're not we all are. Forever, <laughs> you know, someday this man is going to be in a grave. Yeah, and I hope to leave a trail of buildings. You know that stand as a testimony to what we are, what we truly are. Have you ever thought that Zimbabwe means Zimbabwe? Zimbabwe? Yeah. And that's our name as a country, and that infers a legacy of being of builders. Right? Man, exactly, man. <laughs> so. Where should people be coming to see the, the 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 ingenuity and the talent and the brilliance of of people who make things, who yeah. make buildings, who build houses? 
It should be here. We should be the we ones. We should be the ones. That we should, are the people. You know. That should be our story. You know, when I think of um, um, black architects, there's one name that stands out for me. Yeah. Uh, name was Venon Mwamuka. God rest his soul. That man, wow. Just wow. <laughs> you know, I would never have words to do justice to his name. Talk me through some okay. of his stuff because I'm not familiar with him. Join a city. Okay, he's he designed that. That's that's Venu Mamuka. Wow. Uh, ZB Life Towers. Yeah. That's Venu Mamuka. The new airport, like uh, the the, the, the tower in the Red Nation Airport. Yeah. That's him. Um, let's keep going. Uh, I think he was also involved. Um, all the the post offices that were done in Zim after independence. That was yeah. him. Uh, Nast, that was him. AU, no, that was no, him. No. Uh, Blyo <laughs> Airport, uh, that was him. And Blyo did the Blyo Center. He did Fidelity Life. Uh, there's a whole bunch of his buildings around here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And this guy died at 46. Yeah. That's and pretty right young. now, to this day, there is no person dead or alive in Zimbabwe's party's architecture who has had yeah. so much influence on the skylines of our cities like that man. Yeah. You know? So while we are busy fussing about what young people shouldn't be doing or what they can do, you know, yeah. we forget this is all a fleeting <laughs> life. We don't have time. We don't have time, yeah. really. Yeah. You know, we have to make the best impact we can right now. I think the conversation should move away from what people can't do to what people can do. Yeah, that's know? true. That's true. As cliched as that is, it's very yeah. true. Think about, I'm telling you the story of how um, I've had some people, you know, uh, head parting, you know, with me about why I designed this. Yeah. Why can't I have a conversation about what I can do? Why can't we celebrate the things we actually can do? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So when I think of this guy and I see the amount of work he's pushed out, you know, this is not even justice to the work he's done. I think there's a four ways more in essay. Yeah. He yeah, also he did that. that, you know? So, yeah, and uh, construction, construction house, that should have been in as well. Yeah. So when you, when, when you think of, when you think of all these, um, buildings you see the word the man has put out died at 46 you know yeah uh you just realize how much work we have to do how much we should be focusing on the right things because i feel if we're going to go around chasing each other about what we shouldn't do you know we're forgetting about what we can do which is what matters at the end of the day no one doesn't care no, no one cares for what you did not do yeah, you know, no one, no one cares about what you couldn't do. Yeah, at the end of the day, what counts is what you do. What did you do? Like exactly. Maxima says, you know, what we do, you know, in this life echoes in eternity. Yeah. So yeah. 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 that's the perspective I have, and like I said, I have an incredible vision. This country has potential to be something. I hate it when people talk about going to Dubai to see nice buildings. Yeah. <laughs> when we have the people who can make, you know, things not not copy what's been done in Dubai, do something but unique. That's you know, true to us. To us, you know, and still do it so well. Yeah. So I just I'm just hoping, you know, this is a, this is a journey. I don't know what lies ahead. I really don't know what's next. Yeah. But I just pray and hope, you know, wherever. I'm going to be, you know, whenever the day comes when I have to drop the pins and, you know, die, <laughs> there will be something worth, you know, living for the heritage of this country. That does justice to what we are. Yeah, yeah. A legacy of stone builders. Yeah. A lot of people influence uh, the way, certain aspects of my work. I mean, you have to be, you need crazy, work ethic you know yeah. even if you are running a firm that's pushing out the amount of work you need to be working very hard so so i look to, to those people like venon mamoka you know i look at some very old buildings there was a guy called peter oldfield 
in yeah. the National Art Gallery. Did a, a lot of these oh, yeah, buildings. Yeah. It's 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 very, it's a, very nice. It's a good building, man. It's <laughs> very modern building for its time. I think it was done in the 60s. Yeah, man. I, I love, like, especially when you're inside it. Yeah. it the, the, the way you navigate it yeah. is wow it's, man it's, yeah. i'm not an architect i have no yeah. understanding of how that works <laughs> but you know like the first time i went there yeah. i was like man this, i'd love to come back here more often and you can come back <laughs> and the experience is always different yeah and so there's names like him peter oldfield you know i just look at his work around and you see that they've stood the the test of time yeah. you know they're still working they're functional they're evolving they're adapting they're modern, you know. Yeah. So they, there's names like him, but um, there have been many people who have influenced uh, my perspective and certain aspects of my work. In terms of drive, I, I love to read to, to look up to the archangels. Oh yeah, he's a he's a dope guy. Uh, I saw his thing on Netflix. Yeah, <laughs> very interesting. The archangel yeah. is like, <laughs> you know, it's so empowering to see someone so young doing the scope and scale of what he's doing. Yeah. You know, to think he's now working with these uh, space companies designing uh, habitats for Mars, you know, <laughs> designing stuff for marine life, you know, doing a floating city, you know, proposing all kinds of things, you know, young as he is, because yeah. in architecture, uh, 50 is very young as well. Yeah. <laughs> you only like get your big break when you're in your 60s. So to see someone, you know, at that age, you know, pushing out that kind of work, it, it's, it's, it's really inspiring. So I, I, I do very much admire the guy. Uh, there's also Lord Norman Foster, British architect. Yeah. Uh, in, think of any uh, iconic building you want to think of on the skyline of London, the Girl King, for example. Yeah. He was the one behind it, uh, the, 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 the town hall. The Apple uh, office, oh, the one in Cupertino, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's the one who did that. There's a, there's a whole the circular thing, man, the headquarters. Right, that flip, he's the one who, who designed that. So, and he's a pretty old guy, but his work has just uh, stood the test of time. So, he's one guy I look up to, you know. So, th those are some of my errors, but first and foremost, the first person I looked up to, was my father, yeah. you know? I could say in my career, started off from where my father, you know, because my father no longer uh, kept on doing what uh, the work he was doing, was just sending it over to me, because your client is passing them on to me. Yeah. And the very basics of doing this work, I learned them from the work he'd done. And yeah. then as you get advanced, you start doing more things, and putting more and sophisticated things. Yeah, uh, I can't talk much, but uh, he was definitely uh, one of my mentors. You know, yeah. uh, it's, it's the, the journey was made half easier because I had him to look up to. I yeah, just looked yeah, to his steps, see what he done, and you know, it's 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 very inspiring to 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 just have a brother, you know. To, to always look up to when you feel lost because trust me <laughs> it, it does get lonely you know yeah. being an entrepreneur being on your own yes you have your own support system of people but there's nothing that beats having a brother who's into the stuff you are into who's so working who's worked the path <laughs> so yeah those the, those are basically my icons yeah i hear you. those are basically my icons i think the danger with with subscribing to a specific style is that you limit uh, the sort of work you can do. You know, yeah. you limit the sort of uh, thinking as well uh, of what you can do, what can be. So I don't think I have a style. I yeah. think um, architecture is very best, is a very responsive uh, thing. You design in response to what you have on your site, to the demands of your project. So you can't say I just do high modern stuff. So I'm gonna bring my concrete blocks in my big glass panels here because that's the style, that's the style. you know. <laughs> but uh, you work with what you have and you come up with the best you can. Definitely, you'll find some signature 
uh, motifs on my buildings. And I hope you'll see more of them as more buildings are built. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think I have a specific style. Yeah. Um, yeah. You just try to do justice to what you have. I'll tell you one. Yeah. Because I already talked about it on my page. Yeah. Uh, I had the privilege of uh, designing a short for Mazda. Um, you're going to see it somewhere off uh, in the capital. When yeah. it's up, you'll see it. <laughs> and then you'll be like, oh, that's it's great to hear, man. I, so, yeah, it's an interesting yeah, project, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Invite me to the opening. <laughs> I definitely will. <laughs> Um, you see, that, that was the thing about designing uh, a building for Mazda because yeah. Mazda is an iconic car maker in Zim. So, just being involved with, 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 with this organization, trying to generate an architecture for this brand that you admire, you know, the, the, the sort of responsibility, you know, and it's, 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 it's just uh, unbelievable, you know. That same Mazda I used to admire as a kid, you get to create a face of their brain going forward into the future and the yeah. cars they're going to make and what they stand for. Yeah. So I hope when you see it, uh, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be looking forward to your reaction to it. You're basically the guy that sees through how projects, the designs, you know how they're conceived, um, how they're executed all the way till they're there, you know? And that's basically my job, you know? Yeah. To make sure the creative juices are running, everything is working to the way they need to. You know, yeah. everything is true to the way it needs to be working. Yeah. So you're the, you're, you're the one who's giving the creative direction, oh, we have this house. What do you want to do with this house? You want to create something like this, and you follow through with the vision all the way till it's it's completed. Because that's what you do. You talk to the client, you understand their vision, and you try to deliver that to them. Yeah. So that's being a the, the creative director yeah. in a way. As a group, uh, we're emerging. We're young, so. We have a lot of radical ideas, you know, that we want to bring to life. And because sometimes you're working with people who have been in construction for 20 years, you, you come up with this proposal and they just think that's just crazy. Yeah. That's undoable. It's unbuildable. <laughs> you, you can't do that. That's insane. Uh, you guys are just throwing stuff on your computers. It's actually not feasible. <laughs> you know, I had the same issue with the guys who built the we did the brick work on the airport road. Yeah. It's the part that carries those two walls. And I remember I went to the site the other day and they're complaining. Uh, it's like, these things you just draw on your machine. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, just follow uh, what needs to be done is, is on the drains. I'm sure when it's done, you'll be telling people you built that wall. Yeah. And you bet they are telling you they, they, they did that wall. <laughs> they did that wall. So there is vindication in the way that some of the crazy ideas, young and fresh as they are, um, they do come to life. Some of them are just shot down by people who are naysayers or they are used to doing things a certain way. So when you try to bring different things, it's, it's, it's a problem. Yeah. Then on, 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 a, on a personal level, I think uh, that the challenge is to, you know, uh, keep the work going, you know, it's to keep the work going and uh, keep innovating, you know, coming up with something new all the time. There's, there's this thing uh, in us humans, you know, we lean towards comfort, yeah. you know, find a formula, <laughs> control C, control V, you know, just copy paste, copy paste, you know, so that idea of trying to reinvent yourself, approaching something different. I'm sure if you ask me to design an airport road today, same brief, yeah. I'd come up with something totally different. There's nothing like seeing the building, <laughs> you know, versus the render I proposed two years ago. Yeah. You know, just seeing that, yes, 
that idea you had in your head on that cold winter night in May is actually valid. People can build that and it actually works. Yeah. So in a way you feel you feel that sense of relief that yeah, I'm not as crazy as people think after all. Yeah. You know, the <laughs> stuff can be done. Uh so in a way it gives you confidence, you know? Yeah. If I might say it actually acts as a springboard where you lead to even more crazier things. I'm sure you'll see what the Mazda showroom looks like when it's built. It's absolutely nothing like airport. It's different. Yeah. Definitely yeah. has some signature things, but if you if you look at it, you know, there's a certain sense of confidence that's projected in how the building looks, you yeah. know, from a design standpoint. So I think it's a, it's, it's an unfortunate situation where we are we've been in a recession for a long time. So things are not what they used to be back in the day. We'd have cranes all over the place and have these drilling sounds of uh, construction equipment all around us, you know. Uh, but in a way, you know, it's also an opportunity for growth because there will always be a need for, for the architect, you know. Same way in ancient Egypt, you needed the architect to do the pyramids. You still need an architect to do it to, to, to this day. So in a way is that it, it forces you to innovate as the creative. Yeah. It's unfortunate um, that we are, as architects, we are, we, we, are, we are trained to be creative. But when it comes to the business side of things or the practice side of things, yeah. we can't get creative as we need to. We're somewhat in this very rigid box about things you can do, that things you can't do. <laughs> this is how it works, you know, how this is how it should money, be. You... <laughs> yeah, but you could really be, you know, getting creative with it. So in a way, yes, it's a challenge, but it's not, uh, uh, a wall, a solid wall weighs the end of the line, you can't break through. So there definitely has to be a way that uh, people find means of making things happen. I I've seen a lot of uh, people are going into design and build, which is like a beautiful way of ensuring that the vision that you create is seen through. Sometimes you create a very beautiful design, you create something so beautiful but the execution is off. So when you design and build, it offers you a chance to have a certain degree of control on how the vision is achieved. Uh, so in a way, and also a lot of sub-disciplines have been coming through. I'm sure you've seen on my story, I post a lot of work from DYX Design Group. Yeah. They're also a partner. Uh, we partner with them a lot on some projects. Yeah. They are more specialized into visualization. So they don't just do visualization work for us. They also work with many other uh, guys who are into architecture. Yeah. And their specific niche is, you know, doing visualization. So in a way, the challenges we have, they force us to innovate and think outside the box and create uh, new things altogether. Yeah. Back in 1995, I'm sure there was no market for visualization in the profession because technology then only allowed certain things to happen. But now 25, 26 years later, the game has changed. There's a new technology and it's helping and it's aiding the process and people are willing to pay for that. Yeah. So that's another market, that's, that's an avenue that's opened up.